Hey everyone, welcome to another amazing day. Welcome to another amazing video. Today we're gonna to continue on with our self-care plan. All right, we're almost getting to the end of wrapping up and completing our self-care plan. So, there's a few things left that we need to discuss that you need to get in order before we actually get into care for yourself. And then, in the next video, we're gonna talk about care for others, all right? Like I've said in, in the past, you need to care for yourself before you're able to care for others, all right? So let's get started. There are four components when dealing with your self-care plan and your self-care, all right? There are four things that you need to do, or look out for rather, um, in order to complete a full assessment of yourself or a, a full uh, evaluation or treatment, if you will, of yourself, okay? The four steps are look, listen, link, and live, all right? Those are the four. They kind of go in a cycle, and the Canadian Red Cross likes to talk about it in a cycle uh, or in a circular format. However, you can move between the four different areas depending on what the situation is and where you are in the process and your past lived experiences. Because other ones of us have different lived experiences that can take us from one spot to another without having the same feeling as somebody else. We're all different, we're all unique, and evaluating yourself is going to be very personalized, okay? This is why with you watching the videos, you're going to be able to evaluate and analyze yourself and move forward with the, from there, all right? So what is look, listen, link, and live? You're going to look for any of those common signs of stress. And in the last video, so click up here, in the last video we talked about all the different types of stress and how it manifests itself and how it looks and how you potentially could react. Okay, I asked you last week, write down how you react to any of the stressful situations. Did you notice any commonalities? Did you notice any differences, any unique ones? Okay, uh, how did you react in certain stressful situations? So look, we wanna, again, as a refresher, we wanna look for the physical signs Okay, the headaches, the nausea, the indigestion, the mental signs, okay, difficulty concentrating, the emotional signs, your anxiety, withdrawal, your spiritual signs, loss of faith or attraction to faith, your behavioral signs, that recklessness or maybe even drug or alcohol abuse, and we have our interpersonal signs or reactions as well, withdrawal from family, not listening. So that is the first step in order to helping yourself. Look, you need to find those warning signs. You need to look within yourself of how you are reacting. The second is listen. You need to listen to those feelings. You need to acknowledge those feelings and not make any assumptions about them, right? I'm tired, although I've had enough sleep. Well, maybe I didn't sleep enough last night but I went to bed at eight and I woke up at 10 the next day. What do you mean you didn't have enough sleep, right? Don't make assumptions. Are you easily irritated by other people? Watch for those warning signs. Do you feel increasingly critical or cynical or even disengaged when certain individuals are talking to you? And they may even say it, right? They're talking to you and you're just, and they're, oh, you're not even listening to me. I'm just gonna stop talking. And you're like, all right, so are you even engaged in the conversation? If not, the other person's gonna recognize that and they may leave. Watch for those signs. You gotta listen to those warning signs that are happening inside of you. You're then going to link, okay? Linking is getting yourself the support groups or the support networks that you have around you to help yourself. There are four different types of support groups that you can link to. You have your self-support, right? The things that you do to help yourself cope, that is self-support. Whether that's sitting down and watching TV and maybe just taking your mind off of everything, whether that's going to work out, which I would highly recommend, whether that might be going to bed earlier that night um, or maybe waking up a little bit later that, the next day, all right? Maybe it's doing something you truly enjoy, whether it's sports, whether it's uh, artistic, whether it's music, whatever the case is. The second, relationships. 
Do you have healthy relationships that you can fall back to? Whether it's a spouse, whether it's your, your children, whether it's your family members, your parents, maybe it's a, an uncle uh, that you, you uh, connect with, maybe it's a cousin that's your, your age that kind of gets it, maybe it's a good friend of yours, all right? Whatever the case is, use those relationships to help you cope. Maybe it's going out for coffee with them, all right? Maybe it's going to do an activity, going watch a movie, whatever the case is, get away from the situation and start to relax. Could be in your community as well. There may be your neighbors, uh, the community members, going to the park with your children and having other parents there to talk to, okay? Could be clubs in your community. If you really like bridge or you really like badminton or bocce or lawn bowling or, 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 or playing cards or bingo or whatever the case is recently, all right? Similar to golf, I find, and, and a lot of people feel that golf is very stressful, so curling is going to be very stressful. It's kind of difficult if you got to think about it. you got to throw this heavy 5, 10 pound rock across a big long sheet of ice, and two people got to walk on ice to try to sweep it. Like it's everything we teach our kids not to do is basically what we're doing in a sport. It's actually kind of fun, all right? And if you haven't tried it, I would definitely recommend trying it, all right? You see those commercials about Canadians and curling. I'm Canadian and I've just picked up curling in the last couple of years and I think it's pretty cool, all right? The clubs in your community could be, even be workplaces or volunteer organizations, right? Helping other people. Could be the local food bank, could be volunteering with the Canadian Red Cross, uh, could be at disaster sites, whatever the case is. Maybe it's in your work, going out to hang out with your friends or, or your coworkers, um, maybe doing something fun with them, uh, a team building activity. That sort of thing. Those are your community groups or your community support networks. And the last one is culture and society networks. This is where we're going to find our cultural traditions or our religions to fall into and the society system that are placed to protect you as well. Okay, and they could be going to the Canadian Mental Health Association. It could be going to CAMH. It could be going to the local hospitals or calling 911 if you're in that need uh, or even if it's need for other individuals okay you have cultural society the last one is live all right living is taking that support groups uh, taking first of all looking for the signs that are occurring listening to them and not making any assumptions linking yourself to support networks uh, in your community personally relationships in your workplace whatever the case is and then we move into live. You need to live with those coping strategies that you've created to live a stronger and healthier life. So some of these strategies may include, and we kind of touched on them, taking a break from whatever you're doing, developing realistic work expectations. You're only there for eight hours, only do eight hours worth of work. When your day is done, it's time to leave. Listening to and supporting your team. All right, if you are a supervisor, if you are a manager of people, if somebody is coming to you, listening to your team will definitely help, but also supporting them. Why? Because sometimes it takes that load off of yourself as well. If we're able to help ourselves, we're able to take some of our own advice and do it ourselves. Maintain those healthy eating habits, all right? Don't go towards junk foods. Go towards healthier foods or healthier options. Eating, sleeping, exercising as well, okay? Healthy habits. Practicing stress management techniques, mindfulness, meditation, calmness, all right? What I've done for you guys, I've actually created two mindfulness audio clips. They are in the link below as well. Um, click on them, take a listen, just close your eyes, go through them, they only take a couple of minutes, but I want you to take those opportunities and feel free to listen to them and download them and use them as you wish. I probably will be creating more uh, as we go on, okay? Those are two that I just picked up very quickly and talk to you about mindfulness, meditation, just slowing it down, listening to yourself, breathe. Maintaining those healthy relationships and getting rid of the negative ones and asking for help when you need it. It's okay to ask for help. People are there to help us professionally, but your friends are always gonna be there to help you as well. And sometimes maybe it's just, you need to get it off your chest and just need somebody to listen and that's it. Okay, look, listen, link, and live. So take that cycle and play this back a couple of times so you get your notes, all right? We wanna look for those warning signs. We wanna to listen to them 
and, and act on them. We need to link to our support networks and then we're going to live a healthy and supporting life. Now, my favorite saying when we're talking about living, when there's trauma, when there's extreme or traumatic stress, when there's loss of a family member, sometimes we can't go back to normal, all right? So anytime you hear somebody say, oh, just go, we'll go back to normal, we'll get back to normal. No, we're not, all right? And what I want you to know is A, it's completely normal to feel the way you feel. It's completely normal to be under stress in different situations. The difference here is how you're going to respond and act when you find yourself in that position. It's very normal for you to feel this way and we are not gonna go back to a state of normalcy, all right? What we are gonna do though, we're not gonna bounce back, all right? We're gonna to go to a new normal. We're gonna to get to a place that we're gonna be able to live our lives again with that history behind us, all right? That's our goal, that's our mission to helping ourselves. Stay tuned, next week we're gonna talk about how we can help other people. Again, take all those last four or five videos, put them into practice this week, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Take care, have a great week. All right, all right. <laughs> it sounds like I'm in a Lincoln commercial. Thank you all for watching. Uh, remember, we have our cycle, look, listen, link, and live. That's what we wanna do, that's what we wanna accomplish. Any order that we, we find, I mean, if we're in a situation right away, with a car accident or whatever the case is, we know exactly where we are, we know exactly where we're gonna find, and sometimes we're in so much shock of a situation that actually happened that we don't have any feelings yet. We're gonna jump right to that support group. We're gonna start right into Link, all right? Very dependent on you, very dependent on the situation. Stay tuned, next week we're gonna talk about how we can help others and how we can help ourselves. As always, subscribe up here. My last video was over here. Have a great week and we will see you all next week in the next video. Take care. 